September all but guaranteed with the major averages on the cusp of confirming a sharp monthly decline. The emerging market stocks almost wiping out uh, the entire gain this year. We had this big sell off today. We have yields continuing to push higher. It feels like even after the bad September that we had that maybe there is still downside here. It's been a difficult month for stocks with investors now looking ahead to October in the fourth quarter. In the ever fluctuating world of finance, emotions often drive market behavior as much as cold, hard data and analytical insights. Recently, it appears that investors have succumbed to a collective sense of unease, adopting a sell everything mentality. Stocks and bonds have both experienced declines, and a general sense of apprehension seems to be dominating the investment landscape. However, as seasoned investors are well aware, Beneath the surface of negative headlines and gloomy predictions, there often lie opportunities worth exploring. As we bid welcome to October and the farewell to the third quarter, it is clear that investors are operating under the shadow of pervasive uncertainty. Stocks and bonds fell recently, seemingly without a clear-cut reason other than the broad perception that all news should be interpreted negatively. It is worth noting some recent pronouncements that have contributed to this prevailing sentiment. JP Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon, a figure with significant influence in the financial world, issued a stark warning that the United States is ill-prepared to handle interest rates as high as 7%. I just tell people, be prepared for higher rates and slower 7%. growth. 7%? Are we really going there? And, well, and how I don't does know. That when I said 5%, growth. they said, are we going there? Yeah, it's possible. You know, so I, when I talk to my board, I say, yeah, it, it, can it go to 7%? The answer is yes. Are there factors that would drive it, you know, higher than, you know, where it is today? You know, four and a half, four, six or four, seven, I'm talking about a 10-year bond now. Yes. Uh, is supply and demand could push high? Yes. I'm, I'm just saying be prepared for it. So and, 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 and then the worst case is stagflation. Mm -hmm. You know, higher rates because you have a booming economy and there's a lot of competition for capital is not the same thing as stagflation. What are... What are the ripple effects of the stress of that? 7% rates on business, on your growth? Well, I'm not worried about JP Morgan. JP Morgan, you know, we, we're, we are prepared. We can handle 7%. Mm -hmm. We can handle 2% again. 8%? Yeah, we can handle that too. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that risk management is not the same thing as guessing the future. Mm -hmm. When risk management looking at the range of potential outcomes and being able to say to yourself, we can handle this, we can handle this, we don't really expect it, and we can handle the in-between. You know, if you bet your company on, you know, one outcome, so I think all companies do that. You know, and every company's got different exposures, you know, input prices, output prices. You know, some interest rates don't matter, some it's the price of mozzarella. So, you know, <laughs> what's your business? Your business is different, so, uh, but I, I think we don't know the effect of these things in the economy. So they may, we may have a soft landing, we may have a mild recession, we may have a harder recession. You know, obviously there are potential bad outcomes. The, you know, the worst one would be economically is stagflation. Right. Where you have low growth, high interest rates, and obviously if that happens, you're going to see you know, a lot of people struggling. Fed President Neil Kashkari added to the chorus by stating that there is a 40% chance that interest rates will need to rise, quote unquote, meaningfully higher to combat the ongoing challenge of inflation. Meanwhile, the political landscape in Washington has been fraught with controversy and scandal, raising concerns about the possibility of another government shutdown, which could further erode the country's credit rating. <laughs> the list of concerns and uncertainties seems never-ending. In such an environment, it's hardly surprising that consumer confidence has waned, leading to a second consecutive month of declines, mirroring the downward trajectory of stock prices. Scanning the headlines in recent days has been an exercise in navigating a sea of disheartening news. Yet, it is important to recognize that this erosion in consumer confidence is primarily centered around outlook rather than the present situation, which is showing signs of improvement. The curious case of consumer confidence. To delve deeper into this issue, it is essential to differentiate between how people perceive the future and how they evaluate their current circumstances. According to the Conference Board, the Present Situation Index, which takes into account current business and labor market conditions, has actually shown improvement. What's perplexing is that despite this positive development, the Expectations Index, which gauges future outlook, has dipped below a level historically associated with the onset of a recession. This divergence between present and future perspectives is indeed intriguing consumer behavior as the true barometer. 
While the drumbeat of recession warnings has been constant over the past year, gaining intensity the longer we go without a significant downturn, it is essential to keep in mind that consumers have been inundated with these predictions. This persistent barrage of negative forecasts, despite being inconsistent with current economic conditions, has understandably made consumers wary of the future. Yet, when we examine actual consumer plans, a different story begins to emerge. Survey results indicate that intentions to purchase automobiles remain at a robust level, and plans to buy appliances are on an upward trajectory. This pattern hints at a shift in consumer spending from services to goods, a trend that has been anticipated for the fall season. The housing market conundrum, rising mortgage rates. Another factor contributing to the climate of uncertainty is the housing market. Recent data on new home sales fell significantly below expectations, raising concerns about the health of this critical sector. However, it should not come as a surprise that this has occurred as mortgage rates have surged past the 7% mark. Housing costs, particularly shelter expenses, have been a consistent driver of the inflationary concerns that are making headlines, and higher borrowing costs are perceived as the solution to this problem. The reality is that the current mortgage rates are stifling demand, which could in turn put the brakes on price increases, eventually leading to price reductions. As prices dip, we may witness lower mortgage rates as lenders compete for borrowers once more. This cycle is a testament to the dynamics of the real estate market. The silver lining, preparing for a year-end rally. Amidst the gloomy news, there are glimmers of hope. The anticipated reduction in the intensity of negative news could potentially buoy risk asset prices as we approach the fourth quarter, possibly laying the groundwork for a year-end rally. It is noteworthy that major market averages are either at or approaching oversold levels, which often precede market rebounds. In the event of a government shutdown, the prevailing sentiment suggests that it is unlikely to be prolonged. Furthermore, softer economic data could start to reverse the recent uptrend in yields for both the 2- and 10-year Treasury bonds, potentially leading to a weakening of the dollar and the cessation of the rally in crude oil prices. When fear dominates, opportunity beckons. In times when it feels like investors are collectively hitting the panic button and engaging in mass selling, it's often the best time for savvy investors to start buying. As mentioned previously, there are approximately 5.6 trillion reasons to consider this approach. Investors should recognize that the Federal Reserve's rate height cycle concluded in July, and short-term interest rates have reached their peak. In light of these developments, it is reasonable to anticipate that investors may begin reallocating assets from money market funds, where returns are currently variable but substantial, exceeding 5%, into stocks and bonds that offer the potential for superior returns over the long term. It is important to remember that financial markets are inherently dynamic and subject to fluctuations driven by a multitude of factors, including sentiment and psychology. While it's entirely natural to feel apprehensive during periods of uncertainty, seasoned investors understand that opportunities often emerge when fear and uncertainty dominate. As we approach the fourth quarter and look ahead to the future, it is wise to maintain a long-term perspective and consider the potential opportunities that turbulence can bring. Rather than being paralyzed by fear, astute investors may find a path through the storm potentially positioning themselves for gains in the years ahead.